take uh, the, the coat outline and then the uh, assignment. So that is a major thing for me. Um, did we agree that in, who would be your leader here who can be correct? Who can be correct? Come on, be clear. You can't just start. Um, who can correct uh, the course material in, in a flash so you can share? Because it's a folder. I was teaching this course uh, last semester. I've also been teaching it at uh, here you have been teaching it at uh, Hebrew, sorry, at um, Maple Hills. So I already have some, some material, some notes, eh? some, some articles from, from, from the internet and all that. So it's in a folder. So I cannot send it to Mata. You know what I'm If there is 
is anything else, any other price, does not create matter. And therefore, for this to happen, we have said that there are many barriers there, there are very smart uh, information sharing and no cost, no barriers entry, no barriers safety, all those things that we mentioned. And then we also talked about free movement of factors of production. So that's a deep situation where the market will always seek you know, a price which will create the market. Nobody else can. So you have the, the most efficient allocation of the source through the market. So sometimes you get a market failing to do that job. So that's the second part of the time which we're talking about, which where we went through what happens when there is actually no freedom of exit or entry into the market. There's some restriction. It means market will not, you will not get the price to see this market. Some people have power. <laughs> what happens is there are no many, there are not, uh, or we only have one producer or one seller for one buyer, for one consumer, something like that. So you go through all those conditions for a basic market and tell me where the market fails. Okay? So when we say the market fails, market fails, uh, what we mean is that, or oh, in other words, how do we find the market failure? Okay? The market failure is what is when there is inefficient distribution of goods and services that leads to a lack of equilibrium in a free market. That's the definition. A market failure is when there is an, an inefficient, inefficient. where there is inefficient distribution of goods and services and that leads to a lack of equilibrium in a free market. You get it in your notes, but you should use your hands. Okay. That A market failure is when there is an inefficient distribution of goods and services that leads to a lack of equilibrium in a free market. Lack of equilibrium in a free market. Then, okay. where is equilibrium? This. So when you don't achieve this, then the market fails. <laughs> Why do you think there is a market failure there? Because any price above this, you will have a star price supply. Okay? Any price above this, let's say you are moving from here to there. You see, so there will be demand will be here, supply will be here. So there will be excess supply and it's not supposed to happen. Because any excess supply will lead to falling price. Okay? You are you 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 will be going down to that equilibrium price. And any situation where the price is not there. If the price is not here, it's down here, it will reach excess demand because at this price, the supplier will be supplying this, but for you to find the demand, it is there, so there will be excess demand. So any price down below the equilibrium price, there will be excess demand. That will lead to prices going up. So this will be forcing price to go up. When 
there's always excess demand, prices go up. Degree is mine. And when there's excess supply, prices go down. Degree is mine. So this is the most efficient way. And mind you, we are saying the free movement of capital of production. So which means where there is where there is no wages, for example, if a company is making super normal profit in a situation like this one, if you can manage to have excess demand or excess supply and keep it there without prices reacting, it means you have some power. Now, if you have some power, what will, what will happen? The factors of production will move. And how much is going to run there now? Now, all of a sudden, when you have influx of people to your company, because you are making super normal profits, you have an excess supply of labor. So, excess supply of labor will be too lower wages. So, you will be back to where your wages are. That's why that condition applies. So that the market will always create a new This company will still be driven back. So you can have a temporary thing, but the prices will always push you there. So that's the most efficient way. Because here, yeah, what, what did we, I'm sure in, in, when you were doing production economics or microeconomics, we raised that the law of supply and demand is made to lead to an equilibrium price. And when it does not, okay, when it does not, it indicates a factor in the market. Okay, what are we saying? You remember what we said yesterday? So, was it on Wednesday? We, we derived this line from a demand schedule, okay, using Madati, okay, and we also derived the supply carefully from the supply schedule. Because, mind you, this thing we are quoting, this thing you should always under, understand that we are quoting a table. This table is contained with price, quantity. Okay? So we say, <coughs> if somebody is saying, my dad, you have 100 quarters, and somebody is saying, my dad, has 10 quarters. You would buy, you would buy 10. If he is selling my dad at 20 watts, you only have 20 watts. If he is selling my dad at 20 watts, you would buy 5. If he is selling at 60 watts, you would buy 2. Okay? And when you put this price, this one, this is the quantity of my dad here, on the, this is X, this is the Y axis. Y axis depends on the X axis, you have that in the school. So, if you try to put this, you will see that you have a joint there, you have a joint there, and when you just go connect them, you have a shape like this. So, this is a demand shape. That is a demand curve. Now, for supply, it's different. Okay? Supply uh, schedule will look like this. When somebody faces the price, not to have bigger than that. When the price is very quarter, he is or she is discouraged. Up and up, to the height of the When the price goes to 20 quarters, he gets happy. The one who is begging, so 
she gave me this encouragement. He makes things. When the first goes to fish the water, he is extremely happy, so he makes eight. We always assume the economy that human beings are rational human beings. They always choose the best option. That's number one. Number two, we always assume in economics that human beings want more than this. So they are driven. We have that ego that is Timafuna more things than the less in by nature. Okay, and we assume that human beings are rational, meaning when we say rational human beings, we mean they choose the best option. If they are to choose, they choose the best. Something that makes good sense. But remember, this in economics we like assumption. It's not always, sometimes we make, we make very stupid assumptions. Sometimes. Just to make sure we solve the problem. To solve an equation, you have to assume certain things so you can understand the equation. Okay? So now, if, if you brought this, will you, what, can you, what, what trend are you seeing here? That the prices and quantities are moving in the same direction, right? Mm -hmm. Higher price, higher quantity. Less price, lower quantity. And yet, demand was the reverse. When the price goes up, you demand less. When the price goes down, you demand more. Which also makes sense. So, this one is what you get here. And you can see that when when prices go up, you also want you also want more. That's why it is dropping up upward. It's, it's dropping from the left to the right. That's the supply curve. The demand curve drops from the left to the right. Left to the right. Okay, left to the right. And this one is what? Left to the right. Yeah, that's Left, right, right, left. Yeah. Left. Ah, this one is just dropping left to the right. This one is dropping left, left to the right. By right. <laughs> You have confused me. Left, right. I know. I know. The same direction, only the other one is pointing up and pointing down. No. Ah, yeah. Yes. 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 The, thing, the thing is, the supply is even better. So, this is not 
anche se li ha risposti. E il God vai? Il mio God fa il suo stesso di mani? Ah, quando è il serio è il Ok? So we can, for example, we can say, uh, market failure can be caused by lack of information. Remember? Uh, they can be uh, market controlled by somebody. Why? Because they are not many buyers and sellers. Remember, we gave the example of export yeah. or what about? So there is a market control. Somebody has now been able to set the price. The reason we said many buyers and many sellers is because we want to tell you that the, uh, all the buyers and all sellers are price takers. Yeah. They don't control the price. The price is set by this thing, the market. So when somebody controls the market, there will be a market failure. Because there will be a situation where prices are prevailing, but they are not from that source. So, market control. What else did we say can, sell, can, can induce the market? Apart from the conditions that I told you yesterday, yeah. what else did I say? The uh -huh. existence of a scenario can lead to a market failure. What else? Product type. Type of goods? Yes. Public goods, for example. Yes. Medical goods. Very good and all those things. Okay? <coughs> That's why market fair. Now, how can we correct this? How can market failure be corrected? How do you correct market failure? How do we correct market failure? How do you deal with market failure? You 
and me as consumers as prayers are not getting paid. We are not we are not getting the cheapest, the best, the best possible cheapest price of energy. Remember, efficiency means you are producing, for example, at the least cost. Then, ah, now you are behind it. In the perfect market, maybe I didn't come out there here. When in a perfect market, here, we were saying there are many buyers and many sellers. They are all price takers. What do we mean by price takers? They don't demand the price. Mm -hmm. But businesses are making profit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why they continue supplying and others continue buying. Okay, so if you're a business and you cannot control the price, how do you make profit? You can control the price mm -hmm. by increasing in supply. Yeah, you can increase volume. Volume of supply. Yeah. You can make because you are selling more than anybody else. Yeah. Okay? What is the other way you can make profit? You have no control to set the price. You are not set for. You are not order about. The prices are given there and you are in that business. How do you make more money? Well, you can sell more. The other, which is very easy, is that now you have to deal. You have to compete on how it costs you to produce. Production costs. So you have to be the, the least cost producer. And how do you do that? By manipulating the production function, which you raise in, 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 in micro. You raise about production functions, cost functions, utility functions, all that. In different scales, I'm sure you raise all those. That, that, that's my point. How, how companies make profit. It's not profit maximization. Uh, if you are looking at the profit theory, profit maximization in a perfect market like this can only happen in two ways, volume or cost. So you can be a cost leader, for example. When you say cost leader, it means you are the only company who beats everybody in terms of unit production. So, for example, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are in the. Let's assume this industry is the mandate industry. Okay? Mm -hmm. The price is, is, is safe. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, everybody is selling at the same price. They cannot control the price. So, how do you make sure you have more profit? It's either you produce big volumes or Per mandala, in only one day, mandala is 20 watts, but it's only taking you two watts to produce that mandala. Another person is taking five, but you're all selling at the same. Okay? So you must find profit by making sure that you are the most efficient producer of mandala. Most efficient. And that's, and that's what the market tries to do. Efficiency has to be achieved at the equilibrium price. You all have to be price taken. So now, if a, a market fairy, consumer is being deprived of the gain of efficiency. So if it is the government, government will be will, will be what? That that if people are not getting the best value, for example. So if there is an efficiency in with ESCO, what should government do? Intervene and liberalize, for example. Try to bring in new prayers or whatever. I don't know. There are there can be many things that share. So government intervention. Now government intervention normally they come in several forms. In most cases, it's through laws. Laws, taxes, 
Dan Sabdi Diisikan Produs Nyuro Remember, 
Someone can have some choice to be made. If you give a lot yes, No, I say a product when you when you, you buy a product because you will consume. Mm-hmm. You will pay. That's why you pay money. Mm-hmm. Oh, about it. Then then you don't push. Uh-huh. Then you, you pay because you it's a private good. You pay and you enjoy it. That's why you, you leave money. If you can to enjoy and be happy with the product, you will not you will not be willing to release your money. You release your money to buy to buy that because you know you enjoy and eat and be happy. That satisfaction becomes the motive. Okay? Now the problem with externality is that somebody who is not a player is buyer and seller, right? Huh? This one is seller. This one which we call A, surprise. Surprise A. Means sellers or producers. Not always producers, but sellers are sometimes producers. Yeah. Because sometimes they can sell what they are a bit of our order. But let's say usually sellers are also the producers. Huh? And these are consumers. Consumers, customers, or buyers. Okay? So these are consumers or buyers. Now, sometimes the effect of doing this business between these two people, you find that it's affecting others who are not in this game. You are not part of this transaction. And you get harm or benefit. And that's what we call it tonight. Something that like happens to stay back. Okay? You are not part of the market transaction. And yet you get harm or you get the benefit. So those are the tonight. And that's why it creates a market problem. Because this theory of the perfect market of the market does not expect somebody else to get harm or to get to benefit. You remember the type of commodities we visited? Yeah. Public goods, common goods. Grab goods, private goods, medical goods, and all that. Yes. Which we will discuss on my Fine. So government can provide goods, for example. 
public, which are not right. Then, uh -huh. so government comes in to provide vaccines uh, and blah blah, provide um, um, defense uh, to, to take up the defense force because uh, the public good and so on and so on. Yeah. Um, but government can also distort the market, can create inefficiency. So sometimes this government intervention uh, can also fail, and then what, normally what you read in, the book, in this book, they will, they will start talking about what we call government failure. Okay. Then, can cause the decision. Yeah, so uh, these types of substances, for example, to the dispute or punish, you know, um, those negative externalities can uh, trade restrictions, for example. Let's, 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 let's look at trade restrictions. Why, why, why do you think uh, trade restrictions can correct the market pay? Uh, and the problem is this topic has come earlier. This issue about how to operate the market area has come earlier before we go into the topic of international trade. So we will have maybe about four hours of discussion of, of uh, international trade in this yeah. okay. Where we also talk about these trade restrictions. Okay? Now, I don't know whether I think maybe the best thing for us now is just to recognize that trade restriction is also a tool um, uh, for a, me a mechanism for addressing market failure uh, without too much explanation. But maybe I can attempt to, because I don't want that to go into another, because trade is, is another big topic. Eh? Um, if you were a student of dealing with, if you were graduating in economics, for example, you would have a course called International Trade, which runs the whole semester. But here, we, they are put, in our book outline, they are put, they are put something about International Trade, um, which means we will not treat it fairly the way it is treated. It's a course I like so much for that uh, for economy students. But trade restriction uh, is a tool uh, to correct problems that arise because of going to trade. Okay? So, for example, one of the problems is that uh, your company are not strong enough to compete with others. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, if uh, international trade, for example, if um, you are importing cement, or you are importing maybe
Effectivement, on va prendre la route du Zéro. Because they are spending so much money. 